The Extraordinary Assassination of King Alexander of Yugoslavia One of the most unforgettable assassinations that happened in history and was captured live on film. An assassination of a king that occurred before the eyes of many people. But what really happened during that day? Who is King Alexander I and what is his story? In this video, we will not just tell you amazing facts and details about King Alexander of Yugoslavia, but also let you witness the actual footage of the assassination. Brace yourselves, as we are going to take you back to this historical event from years ago. King Alexander I of Yugoslavia, also known as Alexander the Unifier, was once a prince regent of the Kingdom of Serbia before he became the king of Yugoslavia. He was the second king of Yugoslavia after he succeeded his father on the throne in 1921. The Kingdom of Yugoslavia was created by the Paris Peace Conference after World War I. It was divided by different nationalities because it was only a made-up territory from the former Ottoman and Austrian empires which included Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia and Montenegro. And this diversity made the kingdom hard to be unified. In 1921, when King Alexander I was the one who sat on the throne, he abolished the constitution and established a royal dictatorship in 1929. King Alexander I gave the best of his efforts to unify his subjects, from outlawing all political parties that were based on different races, religions, and nationalities, to reorganizing the states administratively, and standardized legal systems, national holidays, and school curricula. He also tried to ease the poverty of peasants financially, alleviate relations with Bulgaria, and renamed the country to Yugoslavia. King Alexander I put many efforts to make the kingdom become somehow a much better place to live. Though at first, the king's acts were well accepted, public demands for democratic forms built up by 1932. It was when the major economic crisis happened, which resulted from worldwide depression to political discontent. Due to this, King Alexander considered restoring a parliamentary form of government, but before he could make it true, his life already came to an end. But what really happened? Here's the live footage of King Alexander's state visit to France. People of France were giving the king a warm welcome, while he was being driven through the streets with the French foreign minister, Louis Barthel. Nobody ever expected that in just a blink of an eye, the king's life will come to an end. The assassin who jumped out of the crowd and shot the king and the chauffeur was identified as Vlado Chernozemsky, a Bulgarian who belonged to a Macedonian revolutionary organization. This organization wanted to secede from Yugoslavia. They were also allegedly allied with Croatian separatists. Payne says that Alexander's assassination was the cause of a return to a milder political climate in Yugoslavia and that by 1939, the regime had returned to a kind of political pluralism. After Tito's death, the post-World War II communist dictator died. The provinces became independent states due to the never-ending bloodshed, plus the Serbians' refusal to surrender its dream of becoming Greater Serbia. The Kingdom of Yugoslavia shows us that multicultural states are much more prone to failing due to differences, and only states with strong, dominant, and unified culture can thrive. This ends the sorrowful, yet unforgettable story of King Alexander I and the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. You are about to speed Alexander! Viva la Oh, they've been shot! Europe. 